Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest dominated Day 2, which means bigger games, some of which I've included in this list indicated by the asterisk, where personally I'm excited for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but the list begins with Liz Funga, the Time Shift Warrior, a top-down hack and slash title with a time manipulation mechanic. You can rewind time and fight alongside clones of your past self, so basically Super Time Force Ultra, but as a top-down game, and interestingly, it's being published by Quantic Dream and other Detroit people, but are now under the NetEase banner since 2022. There was a Day of the Devs stream after the main Summer Game Fest showcase, which included games like Etty a first-person narrative puzzle exploration game where you play as a painter using your brush and colours on the everyday canvas of life and looks beautiful, where you can also create custom artwork for commissions and should be pretty chill. I did not see this one coming where there must be something in the water with the number of skateboarding games we're getting, with Hell Skate mixing rail grinds and kickflips with combat and a roguelite structure. Honestly, it's not appealing visually, but it's weird and unique, and once again shows what's possible with indie games. Volvi! Devolver went full hog with their Volvi thing, in creating a fake mascot and doing the work to put him in some of their games, but where the reception to their main showcase was a little lackluster, since the highly anticipated Gunbrella and Pepper Grinder were conspicuously absent, and I found some of the games in their pre-show to be more interesting, such as Sludge Life 2, the follow-up to an excellent first-person exploration title being an open-world game where you're going around the city searching for your friend, vandalizing the ugly architecture as you go along. The original oozed all kinds of style, and this is no different, having a signature art style as well and is releasing at the end of the month. Another entry from the Devolver Showcase is The Telos Principle 2, the follow-up to a surprisingly excellent first-person puzzle game, surprising because this is from developer Crow Team, also known as the Serious Sam people, so an intellectual puzzle game wouldn't be the first thing that you associate with them, but since they've proved it with the first game, be sure to keep an eye on this. Another title which impressed with the visuals is Haunty, one that uses an intentionally limited number of colours at any one time, where you play as a ghost exploring eternity. You have the ability to haunt things, possessing both animals and the environment itself, having some action and shoot em up elements and is quite a unique entry. Apparently, Cocoon was announced a little while ago, but this is the first I'm hearing of it, being a top-down puzzle adventure game where you play as a humanoid bug person. Orbs are central to this game, which is primarily used in solving puzzles, where they do talk about combat against mighty guardians as well, but that might not be the focus of the game. This is from the lead gameplay designer of Limbo and Inside, who has since left Play Dead, so based on those, might give us some idea of what to expect. Another title in Devolver's pre-show is Kama Zoo, one that is fascinating in concept since it's a self-described altruistic cooperative platformer where 10 randomly matched players, playing as one of 50 different characters, must work together to help each other out, all just to get good karma, which is a fascinating premise. Of course, this might result in an experience that is like Journey, being a fascinating experiment, although I am definitely concerned with the player population. This next title was a surprising entry since, yes, your grace, Snowfall, is the follow-up to a game from 2020 where you play as a king and have to keep your people happy while managing the resources available to ensure the survival of your kingdom. It is more of the same in the sequel, where heavy is the head that wears the crown since you need to make critical decisions where winter is coming and you need to prepare for the worst. The pixel art style has changed slightly in this, adding depth and more 3D looking assets rather than pure flat 2D pixel art where things like lighting certainly add to its visual appeal. The next game from the developer of Mutazione is titled Salt Sea Chronicles, spotting a similar art style and is also a narrative-focused title. However, rather than being about mutants in a post-apocalyptic world, this tale is centred around a stolen ship and a kidnapped captain with a whole nautical theme where if their first game is anything to go by, the writing and characters will be the main draw. We also had some new gameplay footage of Viewfinder, a first-person puzzle game that plays with perspective where you're using a camera to take pictures and then using that to solve puzzles and advance further, where the exciting news is that this got a release date in July, so look forward to it. Another game from the Devolver pre-show is The Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood, a pixel art narrative title where you play as a witch condemned to exile on an asteroid, having to craft your own tarot deck and to use it to influence Cosmic Witch Society in order to regain your freedom. 
The pixel art is pretty and it comes to us from the Construct team, the creators of the Red Strings Club, which is another excellent narrative game which makes this new entry of interest. I don't exactly know why, but by Steam followers estimation, Party Animals is the most anticipated game on Steam, more than Silk Song and even Starfield, but where it looks like Gang Beasts and is a wobbly physics multiplayer game that should not be that popular, but somehow it is. As a result, this got a showcase spot, with the news being that it got a release date of September 20th, looking like a chaos filled multiplayer experience. Ok, this next title is not indie, but Path of Exile 2 showed signs of life after first being announced in 2019, after which they went kind of radio silent, where this expansion slash sequel to the massive free to play action RPG continues to look awesome and is timed just right as well amid all the hype of Diablo 4. From the developer of Ape Out and Getting Over It comes Baby Steps, a physics based walking simulation that looks like Quark in 3D, somehow out Kojimaing Death Stranding as you control a man, precariously taking one step after the next and trying not to fall. 2D Quark was bad enough and this just ramps things up to the next level, looking like absolute torture and seems to be geared towards streamers. We did also get another look at Hyper Light Breaker, the follow up to Hyper Light Drifter, but rather than a pixel art top down action adventure game, this is a 3D action roguelite, which I know some of you are unhappy with, but it still looks kind of cool, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Another game with a pedigree is Summerhill, coming to us from the developer of the Eltos Adventure series, games which did supremely well on mobile, where rather than a runner type experience, this is instead a serene and beautiful looking story driven adventure game. You play as a shepherd, exploring the pastoral landscape to reunite your flock, uncovering long forgotten secrets in the process and simply looks wonderful. There's news with regards to Witchfire, a beautifully grim first person shooter in a dark fantasy world getting an early access release date in September, although it will be an Epic Games Store exclusive for now. Finally, the Farm Simulation RPG. Fae Farm got a release date and it is soon as well, where this first showed up at that eventful Nintendo Direct and did not show up again until now. But they also confirmed a release on Steam at the same time since it was previously only announced for Switch. Nani. Apparently this game is going to be $60, which seems kind of insane, where I now realise that this is from Phoenix Labs, the developers of the Monster Hunter-like Dauntless, who have 4 studios all over the world and are by no means a small indie developer, which probably explains the pricing, but I don't know, I'm not optimistic about their chances. If you watched the video on the most popular indie games, you would have noticed the surprising popularity of Human Fall Flat, which of course makes its sequel a title of interest. Pokemon Gun aka Pell Wall, also got the new trailer, where we got another look at this insane action monster taming game where the monsters fire guns and missiles and where there are other insane things that you can do, including using an electric type Pell to electrocute other Pells that live in the water. There's a glimpse of a sweatshop where pals are being forced to manufacture weapons, continuing to look impressive and is something very different in the space, getting an early access release window of January 2024, so let's see if they make it to release. Korean Pinocchio Bloodborne Lies of P is one of the more hyped Souls-like titles in development where it rightfully got some blowback since it was just a little bit too similar to Bloodborne with the transforming weapons. But if you're a Souls-like fan, I'm sure that this will be of interest, where there's a demo available right now until the 26th of June, so do try it out. From the developers of Wondersong and Chicory comes Beastie Ball, a monster taming RPG title where you're coaching a team of monsters who love to play volleyball with each other. There's a variety of cute and whimsical creatures as well as a relationship system between them where the developers highlight that catch em all is not really the focus of the game but rather getting to know and to spend time with the ones that you care about, being a different kind of monster tamer. This top down survival action game is absolutely gorgeous where you play as a wizard with a gun, attempting to stop the end of the world with some fantastic art and minute to minute action with a demo available right now and a release later this year and you can find more summer games coverage in this video.